Hello everyone. Last week a joker that writes what I consider an onion of testing, where everything is just the opposite of what I think are good testing practices, wrote a blog post, another one I should add, where he again bashes Cypress syntax. Unfortunately, in this blog post, he uses my example blog post avoid Cypress Pyramid of Doom as an example of a bad, terrible JavaScript Cypress test. The application has a couple of input boxes and shows the sum of two numbers. You can see the input with name A, input name B, and the result, which should be the sum. Now, this is my good version. Ah, just that I finally show is where you get the value of each input box converted to a number and then save as an alias and then you confirm that the sum of aliases is equal to the result shown by the page. And of course the joker says oh it's so much worse than equivalent Ruby syntax and look how easy it is to use 2i versus parsing. Now I would admit that Whatever you learned and whatever language you know the best is the simple syntax for you. That's, <laughs> I think everyone agrees on that. You also have to understand that the only language that runs inside the browser is JavaScript. So if you like Ruby, well, too bad. If you want to work with web applications, at some point the code gets converted to JavaScript. So there is no getting around with JavaScript. Now, there is one thing that I find kind of ironic and funny. I thought he would bash this test for different reasons. It's not a good test. It's a good example of using aliases, and that's why I wrote that example blog post. But the test itself doesn't follow a good testing practice, in my opinion. Of course, that joker completely missed the point. This test is bad for the simple reason that it actually computes the values itself. It doesn't check that whatever application is showing is equal to some static value that it knows. Instead, the test computes the values. It also grabs the values from the page and, of course, it doesn't mean that the values are what you expect them to be. In case of JavaScript, there could be weird conditions like if you have no values, let's say empty values, right, then the test will fail with cryptic none is not equal to none and you're like, wait a minute, none it should be equal to none. Unfortunately, in JavaScript, the special value of not is number doesn't equal to another not <laughs> a number. You have to use a function that's called is none to check if the value is not a number. And so this particular assertion that computes a value in this case would be like expect this result to satisfy is not. And now the task has to add more logic. It has to say, okay, if is none, or maybe the inputs are none, like you have to check a lot of stuff, else you have to use the sum. So the test now has all this logic to compute the result, to use different assertions in both cases. And the simple reason is the test does too much and doesn't actually know what to expect to find on the page. And that's why this is so bad. So let me show how I would write this test and take it from me. This is the best practice. Instead of you grabbing the value from the input to use, just confirm the value that I expect the input to have. Should have value and then this would be two. And the next input box should have value of three. Okay, so the inputs are correct. And what's the result? Well, the page should contain an element with ID result and the text five. That's it. No more conditional logic, no more computing the result that we expect to find from the input on the page. What about the case of the empty inputs, can we confirm that your application handles it? It handles empty inputs. Okay, so how do we get the empty inputs? We clear them. And we clear the second input and then the page should show the empty. Perfect. Look at the syntax. Isn't this pretty reasonable? Cypress makes it really simple to check the page, the application behavior, the network, everything following the best practices, as opposed to trying to get values to compute them. 
Even better is instead of relying on the page shows is to control the inputs ourselves as with given numbers. So we don't need the aliases. So what we will do here, we'll clear it and then we will type, let's say 10 and we'll grab the second input. We'll clear it and type, let's say 30. What's the result that we expect to see? We're not computing anything. We know precisely that 10 plus 30 is 40. So that's what we expect to see on the page. So hope this clarifies the matter and you now agree with Cypress Center is not that bad.